Welcome, everybody, to the show that never dies, the show that always cries, and the show that always lies. This is State of the WWE, <laughs> number 16. Can you believe that this show has survived for 16 episodes? This is the 16th. My name is Joe Cronin. This is YouTube.com slash Joe Cronin Show, and this is State of the WWE. As always, I am joined by my very good friend. Uh, well, normally I'm joined by my very good friend, Kristosovic, but he is not here today. We have a fill-in. Sir, would you like to introduce yourself to the audience of State of the WWE? Yeah, how you doing? I'm uh, Brito Frank. Uh, it's B-U-R... Uh, burrito Frank, you know, burrito, like, like the kind you eat, and then Frank, like the guy down the street. That's a good way to remember it. You can do a little rhyme there, a little mnemonic device, and uh, Burrito Frank, here I am, guys. I'm a little, little nervous, first time on the telly here, but uh, let's, let's do our best, and that's all anyone can ever say something. I'm getting nervous. All right, all right. Well, don't, don't take your colostomy bag out just yet, you know what I mean? Let that thing ride. We're going to get into some WWE talk as normal, and that's what we do here on State of the WWE. We talk about WWE stuff. So let's talk about a real quick, quick piece of news, really quick. Um, this is something we talked about uh, for a while. Um, but the WWE is looking to unify the United States Championship uh, with the Intercontinental Championship, which, of course, would probably pit Dean Ambrose versus Biggie Langston, most likely at the Elimination Chamber. I like this idea. I know that we, uh, I had talked with my other partner, Chris Tosovich, that, uh, you know, at this point, don't you know, it should have already been done. It's too late to do it now. But I don't think it is, and it's going to happen at Elimination Chamber. It looks like. What do you think about, about this thing being united, uh, Mr. Burrito? Well, the United States has always been my favorite country, being uh, born and bred here in uh, the good old U.S. of A. So, uh, why not? Why not make it a little better by adding that intercontinental stuff there? Maybe they'll just get rid of the whole intercontinental thing to begin with, because, I mean, you don't need any more than one continent, specifically the American part of that continent. And um, maybe we can uh, throw it on that, uh, the uh, you know, the uh, African-American there, the guy, you know, to show us that uh, here in America we don't discriminate. Oh, my God. Well, he, which African-American? With Big E? Uh, yeah, yeah, the guy with the titties. <laughs> A guy with the titties. Well, speaking... that, way, that way we show we don't discriminate against titties or African Americans or uh, whatever whatever else problems that guy has. Okay, all right. I like I like where you're going with that. Now, speaking of titties and stuff like that, I want to bring up a uh, something that is unrelated to wrestling. Uh, a robber, uh, basically this this just happened. This is a news story from uh, from Russia, and. Uh, a robber who broke into a hair salon was beaten by its black belt owner and kept as a sex slave for three days, fed only Viagra. All right? A Russian man who tried to rob a hair salon ended up as the victim when the female shop owner overpowered him, tied him up naked, and then used him as a sex slave for three days. Victor Janinsky, 32, admitted to police that he had gone to the salon in Meshchikovsk, Russia, with the intention of robbing it. But the tables were turned dramatically when he found himself overcome by the owner, Olga Zajak, 28, who happened to be a black belt in karate. She allegedly floored him with a, with a kick. And then in a scene reminiscent of Quentin Tarantino's Pulp Fiction, police say Zajak dragged the semi-conscious Jasinski into the back room of the salon, tied him up with hair dryer cable, and she stripped him naked, and for the next three days, she used him as a sex slave to teach him a lesson, force-feeding force him Viagra to keep the lesson going. <laughs> what, what's going on in Russia? Isn't that uh, how you become a diva? Is Vince McMahon feeds you only Viagra for uh, a few days, and then you, uh, you blow him, and you suck him, and you jag him off, and all that good stuff, and... Uh, and then you come out the other side as a diva? Isn't that how that just works normally? Okay, well, I think he gives them, like, the female version of that and then lets them get really turned on for, like, seven weeks, and then he comes No, in. no, no. He gives them Viagra in, in hopes that they'll, they'll grow, a, grow a penis or a, or a penis formed out of labia, perhaps. <laughs> and, uh, and then he'll just he'll pretend, he'll make believe, because he's not gay. Right. But, uh, but he, he, does, he does enjoy a, a phallic labia. I could see that. Right. Vince McMahon would do something like that. Now, 
back to wrestling, besides the Russian people being abducted and, and being raped. And turned into divas. Yeah, and turned into divas. Uh, something I thought was funny was a story about Ryback. Uh, he's like, somebody like abducted him or got him drunk or something because he was posting all these tweets about uh, like things that have happened in the past in wrestling and how he's botched things and and uh, people he was mad at. And then those got deleted and then he tweeted that he was let go and then he deleted that. And what, what's going on? You know, I don't know if someone like took over his Twitter or he drank the wrong juice or, or something. But he's uh, gone into some kind of other world. What, what, what are your thoughts on, on, on Ryback's Twitter account? Um, I don't know if you know this, but uh, I am on the Twitter. I am on the Twitter all the time. I don't have an account because uh, I don't like giving the government my information. But I, uh, I, I browse, and uh, I notice that... Uh, Old, old Ryan Reeves there has been tweeting, tweeting some maniac, maniacal, maniacal, maniacal. Uh, how do you say that word there, Joe? Maniacal. Maniacal stuff there, and uh, mostly uh, it's it's about uh, I think when he called that uh, horse woman a horse back when he was on the uh, commentary booth, he said, uh, "What's her name? Lillian, uh, Lillian Graziano or uh, Graziasis? <laughs> Graziasis, I believe it's pronounced." He called her a horse face. And ever since then, they've been uh, they've been uh, yelling at him and calling him calling him the N word or something like that. Whoa. And uh, he he got very upset. So uh, I think he's uh, bowing out, as they say, as they uh, as they give him the old uh, the old one two skadoo. I don't know what's what's happening with him and, and what's going on with that account, but uh, let me tell you something. Uh, I, I just want to open the forum to you, Mister Burrito, and uh, in a little while we're gonna bring Chris Tosovich back, I believe. Do you have him? Is he, is he at your house? He told me he was there. He's taking a shit. Okay. Is that because, you know, he ate too many burritos or what, what's going on? No, no, we don't like burritos. I live with them now. Um, he doesn't know this. I just kind of come in here when he's taking a shit. I, uh, I play with his stuff. I move things around. Uh, sometimes I eat something out of his fridge. And then uh, when I hear the toilet flush, I jump out the window. <laughs> okay. What do you think about Caitlyn leaving the WWE? Caitlyn just out of nowhere, you know what I mean? No, uh, I mean what happened? She 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 let herself go, and we never got to see her nipples. Uh, you, no, we didn't. We didn't. We were always hoping the Attitude Era would come back and her nipples would come out, but no. What do you think well, they look like? Do you think they're as big as you? I mean, they like they're like pizzas. No, 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 no. They're, well, what kind of pizzas are you talking? English like, muffin pizza, pepperoni, like pepperoni pizza. Like a like a triangle slice, like a slice of pizza, like a triangle. Yeah, they they're yeah. triangles. Like like kind of like a calzone that you cut open and then squeeze. Right, right. Well, do me a favor, Mister Burrito. Yeah. If you could go get Chris and find out if he's okay, and and see if he wants to come on the show. If, well, if he, he doesn't, he doesn't know I exist. So I can't. If I go knocking on the door, he's gonna be like, "Who who's in my house?" And then this, I, I lose this whole gig. But I'll 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 do you one better. I will. I will call him on my way out the window, from an unknown number, because he don't know my number and none of that. And then hopefully he'll flush the toilet and come out here to answer his telephone and see what's going on, and I'll be gone. Okay. All right. All right. So I'm gonna go call him and jump out the window, and then uh. And then hopefully uh, he'll he'll be back. All right, all right, all right, burrito man. What b- bung ho? Uh, go see it's, what happens. Uh, it's Frank, burrito Frank. Frank burrito bur- burrito Frank. Burrito Frank. Yeah, I'll remember that for next time. Burrito Frank signing out, jumping bur- out the window. Go get him. Burrito Frank. What happened? I think we're gonna be. I don't know if Toss- Chris is gonna be back or. God knows what happened to him. It's almost like we're th- there's there's like a, a magic act going on right now or something. You know, like will he return or or, or won't he? Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is the WWE, the state of the WWE, and it's in it's in it's in a it's in a good state, I think, because we're finally getting to that point. We're getting to that point. That we've been waiting to get to for a long time. We've been waiting for a while. 
It's almost WrestleMania. Oh my God, he did a magic trick. Why is why is all my why is this why is all my shit set up? Joe, there, uh, Burrito Frank was was here. He was sitting in your seat. He set your microphone up. He was talking to me. He called me. I Ooh. thought it was you that called me. Who the fuck is Burrito? What, what's a Burrito Frank? The guy with the mask. He's got a mask that- on. He was just sitting at your on your bed or something. I thought he was just. I thought he was joking. He said you didn't know about him, but um, I, I was just getting- taking a shit. Uh, and I come back and my mic set. Well, anyway, what was what, what was this? The state of the WWE? Let's get to it. It was. Let's, 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 let's kick this off. Let's get to it. Someone's in your house. That's all I'm trying to say. But um, no, I'm the only one here. I don't. <laughs> Well, I, I Hold on, the, the window's open, but I think I, I think I did that before I took a shit, so the smell wouldn't. I don't really remember. But no, well, okay. Caitlin left the WWE. Oh, that sucks, I man. I don't really care, to be honest. Really, I liked her a lot. I don't know. I, I guess I didn't get to see enough. I never had that moment where I was like, God, I can't wait to see more from her. It just kind of never. Maybe that's not her fault. Maybe it's just maybe I didn't watch her enough because the divas. I hate the divas. I don't know. Yeah, they didn't really give her enough screen time to really prove herself. Let me ask, can, can you hear this? Let me ask you. I'm gonna play something. Oh, never mind. I can't play it. Never mind. Okay. So you won't be able to hear it. So never mind. Okay. <laughs> um, unless I can open up a folder, but whatever. I'll be doing that anyway. So we're approaching. So what do you think? I mean, do, I asked Burrito Frank, who's some guy who's in your house apparently that you don't know about. I still don't think that's true. But what? Go on. Okay. Well. I asked him what he thought about the United States Championship apparently is going to be unified at Night of Champions. Yeah, and that's actually something that's pretty awesome. And hopefully they'll switch it. Well, obviously they'll switch it to the Intercontinental title and the U.S. will go the wayside. Well, you remember we talked about, like, is it too late for that or whatever? And, and now it seems like it do- I mean, they're just they're doing it. So, yeah, it's back to back to its roots, which is pretty awesome. Just tag team world Intercontinental. Call it a day. Okay. And the Divas, I guess. Divas. Like, we always had the Women's as well, so. Yeah. I would like that to change the name, but whatever. We're not going to get that ever. Not with Total Divas around. That's a good point. They're making money off that name itself, so. Right. They created a brand out of a title name, which is not a bad idea, actually, but it's still kind of just enraging in a way. Um. All right, so let me uh, let's move on here. Where was I? Where was I at? So we talked about a Russian and the salon and. Ryback tweeting crazy things on Twitter. He's uh, yeah. He, he might be getting released because of what he said about Lillian Garcia. Well, that that's what I think it is. Is that he? But I don't know. Like it's he almost made it seem like he'd been released, but then he took it away. Like is he going to come back? I'll tell you what. That he he gave them the out by doing this, but and it's too bad because I was waiting for that bully gimmick to come back but i know i know now, that would have been so much better i miss what he said about lillian garcia what the hell did he say about her he said sorry my voice is a little hoarse i've been hanging out with lillian garcia too much oh my god oh my god i didn't know he said, <laughs> he said that. that on commentary oh you're right so that's i forgot about i didn't think about that i just kind of laughed and didn't even and they've been, like, yelling at people backstage about that in general because I guess it's really been upsetting her. So to say it on commentary is a little over the line. I mean, it's not. I, he shouldn't get fired for that, though. He, he, but they fire people for weird things. They should, they should Dolph Ziggler him, if anything, you know? Well, he's already Dolph Ziggler. <laughs> That's true. What are you going to do with him? The only place left to do is fire him Yeah. at this point. Um, all right, so Ryback may be, uh, may be gone. Maybe in, the, in a gymnasium near you soon. I don't know. Yeah, he'd fit in TNA perfectly, though. I feel like um, he'd be he'd be right there with all those other people that no one cares about, really. <laughs> uh, the WWE Network announced, of course, as we thought. DX was funny. That was kind of yeah, kind of entertaining in a way. If my feed didn't keep going down every two seconds, it would have been really entertaining. Everyone's was. It was so overloaded. It yeah. was ridiculous. I think everybody. They were like, it's all all these other places, but everybody was like, yeah, YouTube is where I'm going. Yeah. Um, ninety thousand something viewers at one at, at a time live. That's not. I mean, you wouldn't think that would overload it, but whatever. Maybe it did. Well, it's all high def too, so that's a good point. Jake Roberts' return. We talked about that. You think he's going to be at the Rumble? I think he's. I would think. How? Here's my question: If he is at the Rumble, how's he going to get clotheslined out of the ring? Something about the way he walked to the ring the other night and the way he was. I just can't picture him going over the top rope. You know what I'm saying? Um, he could do one of those things where he kind of spills over the top rope a little bit, but lands on the apron and then gets bumped off the apron. That's a good point. Okay, so he could roll over the rope, be leaning on the yeah. outside, and then somebody could clock him. 
All right. Yeah, and then he could just kind of jump down and land on his feet and then to his knees and then old man away. All right, that's that's not a bad idea, a bad point, but uh, he definitely it will be tough though. It won't be like coming in, in a match or a tag or whatever. But uh, what else? So we're coming close to the best point, the best time in wrestling. We're coming towards the Royal Rumble. We're coming. Uh, we're coming. Um, <laughs> a WrestleMania elimination chamber. I'm excited. I'm losing my voice every day, <clears throat> as you can hear. When's the Rumble? Where are we at? The 25th, right? What are we at? The J- January 26th, Sunday, January 26th, the Royal Rumble. 26th, yeah. My God, we're 14 days away. Uh, I think that Ryback versus Big Show is, of course, being set up so that Ryback... R- Mark Henry came out so Ryback... so people yeah, can uh, Brock, Brock Lesnar. Lesnar. Right. Mark Henry came out so Brock Lesnar <laughs> <laughs> could... Uh, they all seem so similar, but not really. Not at all. Rye but, Brock. Rye Brock. Uh, so that he could look badass and he could throw and beat the hell out of Mark Henry. And that he could have now a legitimate match with the Big Show at a yep. pay-per-view. And the Big Show is there for for uh, Brock Lesnar to run him over so he can look really badass going into a match at WrestleMania, whether that's Undertaker uh, or, you know, Batista or whoever it's going to be. Some people even speculate that, oh, maybe it's just a setup for Elimination Chamber where, you know, uh, Brock Lesnar wouldn't even be at, at WrestleMania. But why wouldn't... He's like, confirmed at WrestleMania. They, uh, they leaked the schedules of Brock Lesnar and Batista. And right. number one, I don't think they're going to fight each other because Batista is going to be at almost every single Raw and live event between now and WrestleMania or between the 20th and WrestleMania. Brock's only scheduled maybe like half a dozen dates total, yeah. uh, including WrestleMania, though. Right. So that means that um, Batista is going to get a lot of airtime, so he needs a feud with someone who's going to be there all the time. Unless, I mean, I don't know why they would sell it this way, unless they have Paul Heyman be the mouthpiece for Lesnar up until Mania. But Well, and think about this. If, it was, if it's Brock Undertaker, there's two guys who aren't going to get a lot of time together either. Exactly. So, but I, they can come out and do a spot, do another spot, and then they can be done for a couple of weeks and then do one last spot before Mania. Mm-hmm. Um, so th- there, are, that's possible, and that could happen. Um, you could have the Undertaker come out, Brock come out the next week, them both come out one week. That could drag it on. I mean, I don't know. Um, uh, Batista, Batista did sign a two-year contract, contract though, so he's not just going away after Mania. Yeah, we talked about maybe Batista was going to be here for six months or something, and that's right. not. And RVD will probably make an appearance at the Royal Rumble, from what I believe and what I've seen. RVD won't be around up until he'll at least be at the rumble whether he's back again for part time he'd be a great surprise for the rumble because it's something people are expecting but would still catch us a little off guard when his music hits i mean it's a great time that you got lost in your heart <laughs> yeah what <laughs> I don't know, that was i think that was macho man saying you've got lust in your heart for, for elizabeth <laughs> <Okay>. hulk hogan <laughs> you've got lust in your heart for elizabeth hulk hogan um just random stuff. That's yeah. what I do. Um, so, eh, what else? What what else can I tell you about? Uh, what else can we talk about? I mean, I, I I've uh, w- I think my biggest wonder of everything is first of all, I think Daniel Bryan's thing with the Wyatts is going to be over soon. I mean, I got to believe this thing ends by the Rumble or something like that. But my question is, who the hell, if not Triple H, because the only person I can see that I would be interested in this match happening with imagine these two guys um is of course cm punk versus triple h other than that who the hell is there for cm punk to take on uh at wrestlemania i'd have to say triple h is the only option um assuming that it's not going to be daniel bryan right which is what we wanted for a while but more and more even though i was like daniel bryan cm punk wrestlemania it's got to happen uh, more and more, I'm starting to believe it's not going to happen now. But, right. And the only thing for Punk to do is Triple H, Batista. We're not going to see him do Brock again. And I don't think we're going to see Undertaker Punk again, obviously. I definitely don't think we're going to see that no, again. No, once in a lifetime. So that so that leaves, I think, like we said, Triple H. That tease with Triple H or Shawn Michaels even. but um, Steve Austin. Steve Austin, but... He just does not seem like he's coming back ever. Based on what I saw that night uh, at the WrestleMania, at the WWE Network announcement, rather, 
he just doesn't seem like he's into it or cares. He, he said if he ever did come back, it would just be for CM Punk, though. Right, but I don't, I don't think he's coming back. I don't think so either, but it would be... Unfortunately, because I, I, mean, I want him to be yeah. back, but I don't think so. Based on what I saw, he just doesn't... He wants to go drink and have his podcast, hang out, go hunting and fishing or whatever he does, do some but movies. You got to think, though, uh, CM Punk Triple H would kind of be a letdown because look at his last two manias. CM Punk had a really good position two manias in a row. How is he going to go from that to just wrestling... Triple H. As as cool as that would be, I don't think it's enough. There's just no... I don't see a spot right now. I mean, where, who's he going to take on that's going to be impactful? You know, I mean, Biggie Langston, CM Punk. I, I'd love to see that for that, the Intercontinental that would, title. I don't know. I, it would be cool and all, especially if CM Punk won the IC belt and made it more popular. And But I don't know. I just don't see it happening. It I wouldn't be a WrestleMania moment. That would be like a Elimination Chamber type of thing to do. Really, I could see that. Punk and Big E Langston having a match that could be a WrestleMania moment. For the it would United be a great Punk match, don't get me wrong, but it just seems like they're, they're really going to put that much faith in Big E, or the other way to look at it is take CM Punk down from wrestling The Undertaker to the IC champion. you got to think the streak, going after the streak is almost well, greater than going after the title, because you can only beat the streak once, and only one person can ever do it. So they give CM Punk a shot at the streak, and then he goes down the next year to a shot at the IC belt. Well, what's he going to wrestle? The Triple H? What is it going to be? The Battle of the Second Place, guys? Wait, you couldn't beat The Undertaker. I couldn't beat The Undertaker. Let's well, see who can they could put some other. stipulation on it, like Triple H's reign of terror ends in some way, shape, or form, like CM Punk has been known to do with John Laurinaitis and everyone else. Uh, maybe. I, I think CM Punk's screwed because there's nothing... Unless yeah. he wrestles Daniel Bryan. Unfortunately, the that's, the, that's the right answer to the question we're, <laughs> we're asking here. <laughs> CM Punk is, is CM screwed. Um... I was going to try to do voicemails with you, but I don't think I can open up Skype and play them. I'm trying to find the Skype folder, actually, because that's what I want to do. You guys, everyone has left me a lot of voicemails. So while I take a look at that and see what I can come up with, I want to let everybody know. Yeah, see, there's a Skype folder, but it all just stays in the cloud of Skype, I think. There's no, like, manual save or anything like that. Let me play this, see if you can hear this. I don't think you can, though, I believe, whenever I play these. Damn it, Joe. Quit being a pussy and answer my damn phone, okay? Or read my comments or some shit. Can you hear that? No. no. Could, Could you play, play it from your headphone, headphone into the mic, mic maybe? maybe? Um, or a set, set of headphones, of headphones into the mic? Let me try mic? something here. So, guys, what you can do is uh, right now while I'm doing this little sort of break thing here, go to YouTube.com or, or if you're already on there, just click the like button and stick that thumb up my ass, all right? Just see that like button? It goes in. It goes in and it comes out, and it's a like button, and you click it. We want to get 69 likes on this video. Share it everywhere. Like it everywhere. Tweet this thing out. Annoy the hell out of people. Tweet, tweet, tweet this thing out at WWE. What I want you to do, if you have a Twitter, if you don't have a Twitter, take this video, copy and paste it, and also in there, make sure you tweet it too, at WWE and at WWE Universe. That gets this thing spread around. A lot of you have found me by that. Uh, so if all of you could do that, you know, if 20 of you do that, I mean, that's a huge dent. So do that. Help us out. Go to YouTube.com slash Joe Cronin Show. Subscribe. Thanks for, you know, being a part of the show for all this time, you know, that you have been since, man, it's, it's we've had so many now. We're, we're approaching uh, 1,700 subscribers, which I think is great for the, um, you know, the amount of people that are actually seeing videos now because we can't go live on this channel right now. I was only 27 years of age when we started this podcast. <laughs> and now you're 28. And now I'm 28. And I'll be 30, so kill me. <laughs> we'll do voicemails next. Guys, we'll do a voicemails uh, Q&A after this. I promise that. So there you go. There's my promise to you. So this Monday Night Raw is coming up. I think this, can we say that this was probably one of the best, if not the best, uh, raw goes old school or raw retro or whatever you want to call it. It was the best in my opinion. Yeah. Um, if you disagree with that, that's fine. But it's it's you got to put it in your top three or top two or something like that because it's it was a good one. It was it was so good. And then for like we said, for Jake to come out at the end, and yeah. then the snake to piss all over everyone. What um, better time than old school raw for Jake the Snake to finally come back? Yeah. That w it was so good. It was so good. It looked great in high def. I love it in high def because it reminds you of being a kid watching it and everything. 
And Ric Flair came out and cut a pretty good promo. Was it you that was talking about? Was it us? Were we talking about how Ric Flair, you know, what I mean, couldn't cut a promo for the for the football team there? It, it was kind of he cut that football that football promo for the 49ers uh, that was kind of bizarre and wasn't even anything. But then he came out on Raw and he and then he did a real good job on Raw cutting a promo. It was like I think he was, needs to be in his element. Yeah, like where was that for the 49ers? <laughs> he, he, they missed out. Um. But you're right. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's the element. Maybe in a lo- football locker room, he's like, wait, these are the guys that always tried to beat me up because they said I was a loser for wrestling in tights. Did football even exist when uh, Ric Flair was a youngin? Maybe not, which which one makes me wonder why. Well, they're wearing spandex. So, I mean, what's the difference, you know? Would do. Mm-hmm. Which would be, you know, make mm-hmm. the video. And then, and then after, after that, that, you know? know? Eh, sometimes it happens. You know, touch my tally whacker. Play, Play with, with my pecker. pecker. Rub my rhubarb. Toss my own salad. Stroke my salami. Infuriate the salmon. Structuralize the monster. Tame the untamable. Put jelly on that bread. Put peanut butter on that bread. Smack another piece of bread on top of it. Oh, take a big bite out of that bread. Then rip it up and spit it out and scream. That's like the most requested thing I got for the last two weeks. So yeah, yeah that's true. true. There, there it is. People love that, and I see why. <laughs> I don't, I, I'm not sure really, but okay. I don't. I did it, so I <laughs> said something wrong with me. Um. Anyway, so what do we think is going to happen here? What What is? I mean, I'm still going with Daniel Bryan in the championship match. I just don't know who he's wrestling. That's what I'm confused about. Is it going to be John Cena? Is it going to be Randy Orton? But it comes down to this. Who is the most entertaining of all these people? Who is going to make the crowd craziest? And that's why this Wyatt thing kind of throws me for a curveball. Because if you just have straight up Daniel Bryan, current fan favorite right now, is riding it high against the John Cena, always wins, people are sick of it, all that type of stuff. Uh, And then you put those two together in a WrestleMania match, you have Triple H versus Cena from WrestleMania 22 when the crowd was just into it. I think that's what you have. You have a bunch of Cena fans wanting Cena to win because that's all they ever do. And then you have the other 60% or 70% of the crowd that's there who is hardcore Daniel Bryan. I think that adds... Well, how do you get Daniel Bryan out of the Wyatt family? I don't freaking know. (laughs) Now, uh, picture this. This is is a long shot, but um, and I don't know how you would write the ending. But picture, you know how he's been going to the Wyatt family because no matter what he did, how many times he won, no matter how many opportunities he got, how much the crowd cheered for him, he couldn't win the title. It just wasn't allowable. Right. So so basically everything was a lie. Almost like that thing that they say uh, when uh, you're having a quarter-life crisis. Like, well, they said it could be anything you wanted, but that's not true because I wanted to be this, and now I'm in fucking getting an associate's <laughs> degree for food. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, now I like boys, yeah. Right, so anyway... um. Imagine if the rumble comes down to Daniel Bryan and Bray Wyatt and as the last two. Right. And Bray Wyatt's instructing Daniel Bryan to eliminate to get, himself. I, oh, my God. I hate you because <laughs> I said I don't know. I was thinking of that exact thing last week. Isn't it yeah. easy to copy from you now? You're right. Eliminate him and he goes to step outside the ring even. Then he, but then he, has, to, he has to make that decision. Well, wait. This yeah. is what the whole reason I I joined exactly. the Wyatt family was so I could have this opportunity. You're right. Exactly. And it's a big question. What's he gonna do? I I agree with you 100. percent I thought the same thing and I completely forgot. I meant to call you about it. Even holy crap, that is what's gonna happen. There's no way that has to be what happens. Then he just flying knees him out of the ring or something. The only other thing that could happen if they if they if they didn't do that because they figured that people would figure out that that's something they could do, mm-hmm. which we have. Now that we said it on the air, it's not right. gonna happen. Now it's not gonna happen. <laughs> Uh, what they could do is they could – he could follow him in the Rumble, you know what I mean, and, and get jump out or whatever or whatever. Yeah. And at Elimination Chamber, you get Daniel Bryan and, and Bray Wyatt in that match. And it could be again where Bray Wyatt says lay down or something at the end. Right. And then Daniel Bryan – then he doesn't lay down. Now you've built up this kind of like, you know, now it's really built up and people I think would get into it there, but – that would I would be having uh, anxiety until that played itself out. Right, right. So hopefully it'd be good TV. It, it would be good TV, and it's not a bad idea actually. I like I like what you're saying. I like that idea. Um, that I now cannot say I came up with first. <laughs> that we that we have to <laughs> call infuriate it, we, the salmon. We, <laughs> infuriate the salmon. I have no idea what that means. 
structuralize the monster. I have no idea what that means. Hashtag fact. Um, Hashtag you- snake piss. <laughs> Um, go to youtube.com slash Joe Cronin show and subscribe to hear more of our videos. State of the WWE every every two weeks we try to do it. I think this is like four weeks now. But um, there we go. And go to Twitter. Follow me on Twitter at Joe Cronin show on Twitter. I'm this week, of course, Chris Tosovich usually always joins us. Uh, we had a little special guest today, uh, F- Burrito Frank or Frank the Burrito or somebody who's in your house. I'm telling you, you better look around. You're going to get a burrito in your mouth at night while you're sleeping. Because he's there somewhere. We'll see about that. We will. If uh, I wake up with refried br- refried beans spilling out of my mouth, then uh, I owe you a Coke. I like it. All right. Well, I agree with you. Um, so anyway, guys, I think uh, I think we're coming to the end, really, of this uh, state of the WWE. I think we really have to get another Raw to, uh, or two before we're a Rumble to figure out some more stuff. I think we're going to do some more videos uh, after we're done recording this. So look for more videos from us uh, on the, on the website. And I'm trying to think of anything else that I that I left out. Can you think of anything else that, that we didn't talk about here? That um, I just watched SmackDown yesterday. I'm trying to think if there's anything that happened on there that was uh, particularly good. Uh, oh, the New Age Outlaws still look great in the ring. Somebody was telling me it was like a pay-per-view. Yeah. What? what SmackDown, SmackDown or just that match? They just said SmackDown was like a pay-per-view. It was kind of a spillover from old school Raw. The energy was still high. They still had a couple of uh, legends floating around. Was so, yeah, it, it kind of had some high energy, but... I wouldn't say it was the quality of a pay-per-view, just maybe just the atmosphere of a pay-per-view. What what was the crowd like? Was it better than Baltimore? The crowd was great. The crowd okay. was really awesome. When um Luke Harper went over to the crowd, just the whole crowd was just like, yeah, 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 and just wouldn't stop. It was great. Like <laughs> That's, that's awesome. how they chant for him. They just keep saying that over and over again with no rhyme or reason to it. <laughs> that's awesome. That's great. Yeah. That's good news. That's good stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, May Young is... I guess she's not. She's still alive, but she's been taken off life support. So that's kind of sad. Made a video yeah. about that. Um, I don't want to talk about that again because I'll just we'll just start crying on ourselves. Uh, Biggie Langston looked pretty strong to change the subject. Um, yeah. To some more positive, he was he was facing who was it? Um, oh, Randy Orton. It was champion versus champion, oh. and he was looking really strong. Randy Orton had to keep sliding outside of the ring to avoid being pinned, and then eventually. Orton thumbed him in the eye and gave him an RKO, so he didn't even win clean. <laughs> well, of course not. I mean, but that's... it's good that he didn't win clean because that makes the title and Big E look more powerful. And th- well, that's what brings me to that. What I was talking about earlier with like who's who's going to be in the main event against maybe against Daniel Bryan if it's Daniel Bryan, because you really want a strong heel or someone who's going to be very make the crowd vocal for the yeah. for the main event this year. It's been a, like we said a long time since the main event meant something. Where right. usually the Undertaker's matches have been carrying WrestleMania, and I think this last year proved that number one, the whole all of Mania was terrible last night. Even the even the Undertaker versus Punk wasn't as good as the Triple H's and Shawn Michaels matches. We've come I down agree a little with that, bit. Yeah. So we've come down. That that match came down, which is okay, cause, but it was still maybe one of the matches of the year, top three match of the year. You know, I think. Well, yeah. Some other things have happened in 2013. Not top three. It was it was top five. Right. It was, it was pretty good, but and then but everything else in WrestleMania was so bad that it was like that was still the best thing, but that even wasn't the best. So right. it's really it needs help. It needs that main event to be huge this year. That's what they need because they you can't miss you can't put all your cards on the middle match, miss on it, and then miss on the main event as well. It's getting late too because well maybe it just feels that way because the last two main events were scheduled a year in advance but it seems to me like it's getting late for us to still be like what is going to be the selling point of WrestleMania you know we're already well, on the road to WrestleMania well actually that technically starts at the Rumble I think but we're we're on the highway to WrestleMania and it's we're so in the dark we can't even like we can't even uh, confidently say what we think will be the main event and I don't mind that because I think that. The last few years, we've had this, the John Cena and the Rock stuff, which has been driving me nuts. Well, for us, it's great. For the fans, it's awesome. But for the people who they try to draw in once a year, you'd think they'd be working on them already. You know? Yeah, you're right about that. But I don't know, though. I don't. You know, I don't know. There's I don't care either. I, yeah. I, I don't <laughs> as care. long as it's I, good. I think there's plenty of time within a in a month. You don't want to start dragging it out too long. You know? Uh, you want to. I think the last you know four four or five weeks before WrestleMania is when you want to rev it up. Because then yeah. you make people make quick decisions about, like, what is this? i got to see this. 
but over you. two months they might go oh, i don't care anymore about that good point you know? yeah you want to fire them up and then have them yeah just have them go card. yeah well you got to do the opposite of what happened with daniel bryan's career which is we fired him up and then we didn't want this to happen yet so we good had to point. Come, throw some water on that fire and uh now we need to throw some gasoline on that fire baby throw water on that fire Put that sucker down, then light it up again. Get yourself some gasoline and let that sucker burn, baby, burn. Oh, it's state of the WWE. Oh, yes. Luckily, I wasn't recording that. Oh, Rest in peace, headphones users. No, well, uh, luckily, it didn't record because I wasn't, re I wasn't uh, recording it for everyone. But I did kill you, though. <laughs> so, anyway. This was State of the WWE on YouTube.com slash Joe Cronin Show. His name is Chris Tosovich. Find us on YouTube where we always talk WWE live after every Monday Night Raw, live after every pay-per-view. We go live from my channel uh, when we get our license back. And we also go live from Ustream right now. So look at on Twitter, at Joe Cronin Show, and look at that lovely, lovely pussy. No, we missed her. Put her back. Put her back. Give me some of that pussy. Let me see that pussy. Yeah. Ah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. Oh, the hair. It's hairy. It's a hairy one. But this is a Joe Cronin Show. Over 1 million views. Thank you, everybody, by the way. And thanks for subscribing. Click the like button if you haven't. Share this on Google+. Plus and get crazy. We'll see you in the next State of the WWE. I believe it will be State of the WWE Episode 17 coming up next time. Right here on YouTube.com slash Joe Cronin Show. See you after Monday Night Raw this Monday.